Hi friends, Dr. Lisa here, cancer physical therapist and bone fit trained exercise professional. And today is a video with four exercises that are specifically targeted to impact bone health and help prevent fracture for people at risk for osteoporosis or who are attempting to prevent bone loss. So we know in the research that there are four critical ways that we need to help prevent a fracture and or restore bone density when possible. And that is we need to work on posture so that we have good alignment of the vertebra in our spine and reduce the risk of abnormal pressures there. We need to have good balance, which helps us reduce our risk for falling and sustaining a fracture from a fall. We need to have good strength because muscle mass and muscle strength and strength exercise are stimulating to bone and are associated with reduced fracture risk. And then we also need to do exercises that involve either impact or speed. Speed in an exercise is often called a power exercise. And the use of speed or impact is what helps stimulate bone to want to remodel and grow. So all four of those types of exercises are important for someone that is trying to optimize their bone health and reduce the risk of fracture. So every week I'm going to put out four exercises for you that you can mix and match each week and learn from and enjoy and modify to your level of ability and help optimize your bone health. Okay, so the first exercise I'm gonna start with is the posture exercise. And for this one, I'm gonna use the back of a chair. You can use the back of a counter or the top of a counter, the back of a chair. It's really flexible, but something that's somewhere between hip height and shoulder height. Rest your hands on the back of that chair, walk back, and then begin to bend forward. Now, we are going for a long spine position here, sinking the rib cage down towards the floor and falling in between the upper arms to the point where our ears are close to the upper arm. So this gives us good shoulder mobility. You may feel tightness or restriction in the back body or hamstrings. So wherever you need to stop, you do stop. Avoid rounding of the spine to achieve that position. We want to keep the tailbone up, the heart lifting as we sink, where the bending is happening at the hip crease here. Once you get down into that sensation of feeling a nice stretch, pause and take a full breath in here. Full breath out. And then walk yourself back forward. So go for a nice stretch sensation and wherever you feel it, whether it's in the legs or the shoulders, that's just where you're the most restricted or tight. That's fine. Be gentle. Go for that stretch position. Take a full, slow breath in and out. Stand back up and repeat that five times. So that's our beginning posture exercise. And next, we're going to move into the balance exercise component. And this is going to be a slow march. So a standing march. Hands can be placed on the hips. And the slow march will look like this. It's a three-second count. Lift, two, three, lower, two, three. Lift, two, three, lower, two, three. Working on weight shift so that you get weight onto the stance leg. Lifting of the other leg slowly and with control. Lowering it slowly and with control. Now you can absolutely modify this with one hand support or two hand support. So modify as feels safe for you and your current situation. And your goal, up two, three, down two, three, each side, that's one. This next lift is two, and your goal is to complete 20 slow three second marches. The goal here is stability and control. Next, we're going to do the strength component. And for this, I have two dumbbells. You can use two water bottles, two tennis ball cans, two small weights. 
and we're going to be doing a bicep curl. Yes, we're doing an upper body strength exercise. I will incorporate lower body exercises too in future videos, but we cannot ignore the upper body bones. Uh, they need strengthening and um, increased muscle mass as well. So we're going to use a weight that we can do somewhere between 8 and 12 repetitions. And I like it towards the lower end. I want it to be somewhat difficult so that you get to number eight and maybe that's it. That's as many as you can do, or maybe only one or two more. If you're at a weight and you start to get stronger and you can do 12 repetitions and you feel like, mm, I could probably do a couple more, 13 or 14, it's time to increase the weight. So if you're up to 12 and you could still do one more, increase the weight till maybe eight is the most you can do. As you get stronger again with that same weight and you can do 10 or 12, that's how you know when it comes time to increase the weight. You get to that 12 reps and you could still do one more, grab a heavier weight. Okay, so coming down here, grab our weights. Feet are gonna be approximately hip width apart. We're gonna roll those shoulders back and tuck them down. We're gonna open the palms towards the front, keeping the chin tucked and the head long. So the crown of my head is reaching for the ceiling as we work on that nice tall posture. My knees are just slightly unlocked, so I don't have them locked backwards. And my belly button is just gently pulling in just to engage my, my trunk muscles and support my spine in this position. Okay, and from here, we're just gonna curl straight up towards the shoulders, up and then down slowly. Good, and up and down slowly. Again, we're going for 8 to 12 repetitions of a bicep curl. And you want it to be so that by number 8, you're pretty tired. You really don't want to do anymore. I lost count already. We'll call this number 8. Excellent. Good job. Set those weights down. Okay, so we've done posture. We've done balance. We've done strength, and if you do those eight repetitions, you want to take a break, about two minutes, and come back and do another round. Now, you don't need to do additional rounds of each of those exercises, but this one is a good strength exercise to try to do two rounds or three rounds with about a two-minute rest in between. Okay, last one we're going to do involves more speed um, and so that's our power component. And when we move more quickly, it generates more force, more ground reaction force, and more tension in our muscle. And that increased force or tension is stimulus for our bone to become stronger. Okay, so I'm going to do this as a load the spring, bending at the hip, coming up tall. Load the spring come up tall. And if you see like me, you come up off your, off your heels a little bit and onto your toes, great. Load the spring, hips go back, nice long spine, come up tall. If you want, you can hold on. That's a very effective and safe modification for this. Let's do 10 repetitions. And on this one, you can also do one round and work up to two rounds or three rounds with about a two minute rest in between. So how I would do that is I would do my bicep strength exercise. While I'm doing two minutes of rest for that, I can do my power exercise because my arms are resting. At the end of that, do one more round of the bicep curls and then another round of the power stand up. I hope that's a great routine for you. I'm going to try to put out this type of brick house bones exercise program every week. So if you liked it and you're interesting, hit the subscribe button and you'll automatically get a notice about next week's program. And this is all about building brick house bones. Like the three little pigs, it's the little daily actions we take time over time that in the big picture create that solid foundation and skeletal structure that we're all striving for. I thank you so much. I appreciate you. Please hit like, subscribe, 
and share it with friends because you know you're not the only one looking for this free information. Thank you.